Yes, I'm glad to have an opportunity to talk to you about uh, inductively coupled plasma, so in short, ICP spectrometry, and I hope to demonstrate to you that it, has a, it is a technique with an unlimited potential. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, thank the organizers for uh, giving me an opportunity to discuss my research uh, without any intermediates, and uh, this you know, drastically minimizes air propagation. So what is an ICP? Uh, so it's a partially ionized gas. And so you see a picture here of an ICP, uh, an argon plasma. So it's an electrodeless discharge. And uh, the sample is introduced into it through uh, what is called an injector. Uh, so in the form of an aerosol. And as the aerosol moves up in the plasma, it undergoes desolvation, vaporization, atomization, and ionization. Uh, this is exemplified here using a cerium in solution whose atoms and oxide emit in the red and the ions emit in the blue. So you can see the sequential processes taking place. The temperatures in the plasma, depending on where you look, are up to uh, 10,000 uh, Kelvin. And so at these high temperatures, uh, not only uh, is what you put in completely atomized, but it's also uh, ionized. So in, uh, there are two ways we can use a, a plasma. Uh, one is to measure emitted light. And so this is uh, an example of how this can be done. Uh, we're using here what is called a Rollin circle. So basically, uh, the light is uh, coming in um, and then uh, diffracted using a series of, of gratings onto a series of uh, a charge couple devices, and so this allows a simultaneous detection of the whole um, emission spectrum. So either atoms or ions will emit the characteristic uh, emission spectrum, and this is uh, measured simultaneously. And this can be done with up to eight orders of magnitude in terms of linear dynamic range. If you look at signal as a function of concentration, uh, it covers eight orders of magnitude. And so this is advantageous because uh, it means if you have a, you know, a series of samples with a wide range of concentrations, you don't have to you know, do many dilutions, if any, in order to have these uh, concentrations fall within the linear dynamic range of your calibration curve. The uh, ICP as an emission source also has a, a number of uh, other additional features. First of all, in terms of uh, sensitivity, it is uh, intermediate between what you get with a flame uh, in atomic absorption spectroscopy and with a graphite furnace or electrothermal atomization in atomic absorption spectroscopy. Uh, it's very uh, free of uh, matrix effects, also called chemical interferences, because of the high plasma temperature. As I mentioned earlier, basically everything is completely atomized in the plasma. This is an advantage, but also a disadvantage, because if you want to do uh, speciation analysis, then it means you have to separate the different species of a given element uh, in order to differentiate them. Um, in practice, ionic emission is usually more intense, so more sensitive than atomic emission uh, for a whole bunch of elements. And uh, measurements can be done with good precision, so similar to what you can get with uh, flame atomic absorption. Now, nothing is perfect. Uh, ICP uh, spectroscopy has one Achilles heel, and that is the sample introduction system. And so you see a picture of a typical uh, system here where you have a nebulizer, spray chamber, and then uh, the aerosol has to go down the central path of this, what is called a double path spray chamber. Most of it can um, drops out in the drain here. This uh, round circle is a drain of the spray chamber seen from the top. And the uh, finest aerosol then makes its way into uh, the plasma. So a problem with this system is that you have 95 to 98% of the solution going down the drain. Uh, so there are alternatives that exist. Uh, an example is an ultrasonic nebulizer with a desolvation system. Another possibility is direct injection nebulizer. 
Um, so with the latter, you have basically 100% of the sample that goes in the plasma, but the problem is that, you know, you have also 100% of the solvent and that cools the, uh, the plasma. And if you use an ultrasonic nebulizer with the desolvation, the problem is the desolvation removal of the solvent basically uh, degrades the excitation capability of the plasma. The other problem is that you can lose uh, analyte in the desolvation system and the long sample path that the, has to be followed means that you know, it can't stick on the way and so you, you have problems of memory effects. 